Welcome. My name is Paweł Głodek and I'm Associate Professor at University of Łódź. I work for uh, the Department of Entrepreneurship and Industrial Policy at Faculty of Management at University of Łódź, Poland. So let's start the module personalization. So uh, there is a great need for personalization in education. Uh, personalization creates an uh, opportunity to build a healthy competition between, uh, between students, um, makes a students more responsible for what they are doing and what is the aim of their action. Um, they can experience diversified uh, learning experience. They uh, might have personal assessment uh, it increases um, productivity and and uh, is more practical uh, in terms of uh, learning. Uh, the personalization, I think, for personalization in education uh, is more or less related to, um, to the sentence which is visible on the slide. And some say that uh, even Albert Einstein is uh, said this sentence, uh, but. Um, if we look at this, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live uh, its whole life believing that it, it, it is stupid. So it of course needs that, uh, that, that, that there is a great need for personalization because uh, people, students have different abilities, different skills, uh, and can achieve um, the same goals with a different means or can achieve a, di a bit different goals also in the same process. So what do we need to personalize in educational um, system and uh, in education? Um, we, we need to personalize these three elements. So the learning objectives, the content and teaching methods. So one of the uh, most important elements of personalization is a uh, personalized, personalized classroom. Classroom as a, as a space or, or a physical or um, virtual uh, space for, uh, with, in, in, in which the, the, the learning process or teaching process is going on. So, uh, so components of, uh, if we look at components of a personalized classroom, we can find uh, personalized students' profiles, personal uh, learning paths of students, goals created for each student, flexible learning environment, and also providing uh, uh, students with a different choices of how, how what, uh, where, and when to learn, um, use of uh, different technologies uh, and the technology as a, as, a, as, a, as a whole. And also there is a space also for other choices, uh, in, in, which can be uh, components of different uh, concepts of, of classroom. One of uh, the mm, most important elements of, 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 of classroom uh, flexible uh, uh, construction is uh, flexible learning environment. But uh, but uh, uh, let's start with with physical environment. So so classroom uh, we can understand classroom as a physical space, physical environment. And uh, uh, of course, in that uh, condition, learning environment should be able to flex to, uh, to fit with how each uh, learner learns, uh, learns best. So uh, it can provide some options uh, which can be used in the learning process by different students. So as an example of this uh, concept, uh, here you can see uh, mm, yeah, on the screen, on the, on the slide, uh, uh, picture which shows the uh, Kevin McLaughlin uh, idea uh, how uh, this physical space might be divided into five zones and uh, it indicates that uh, 
that uh, a zone should have um, those five uh, five zones. Uh, the first is discussion and, and thinking zone. The second is discovery zone. The third one is uh, show off zone. Uh, the fourth is repeat level zone. And the, uh, the fifth is creation zone. So um, each zone uh, creates a, a special environment with different equipment, which is uh, uh, aimed at, at a different activity uh, in the um, learning process. And if those zones are accessible by the, to students, then uh, the personalization of the learning process, it's um, easier and it's possible and it can be um, successfully, it can successfully um, bring uh, students' talents uh, to, the, uh, to the classroom. Not only physical environment can be personalized, but also technology uh, environment provide a great opportunity to personalize, to be personalized. Mm, and it might be stated that education now technology used uh, should be a result of the learning content, challenges and needs of the students. Educational technology uh, has the greatest impact when it's fully integrated into individual learning components. So uh, when students are given um, free use uh, of technology and numerous opportunities to creatively demonstrate their learning and they summarize their minds, they achieve far more than the level of achievement achieved when everyone falls uh, the same path at the same pace. Uh, nowadays, uh, technology environment provides a, a, a great opportunity to be personalized. Uh, having in mind that uh, every year, a uh, number of companies provide a number, a huge number of software products, uh, which, uh, which, which which creates a wide range of tools dedicated to various uh, elements of education. It's uh, about uh, education of, uh, of creation, creative uh, skills, uh, about evaluating um, uh, during the learning process, analyzing, applying, understanding or remembering. So as you can see on the slide, it's just a small piece of a uh, small part of the of the software which uh, which might be used in different ways uh, in different uh, uh, parts of the learning environment uh, learning learning process and uh, nowadays and additionally uh, in some cases uh, um, artificial artificial intelligence can be also considered as a one of the options uh, which might be implemented into uh, in, into in, uh, into elements related to uh, increased increased personalization in the learning environment i mean uh, something uh, uh, like ai assistant uh, may provide some additional benefits uh, um, uh, during the learning process uh, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, usually uh, is understand uh, that uh, like a use of, of algorithm, a lot of sophisticated algorithms that analyze um, employees or students' experiences and activities uh, to suggest uh, some development paths through, uh, through training. So uh, it's uh, this this kind of application creates a case similar to uh, uh, recommended for you section uh, uh, of Netflix or, or other um, uh, content provider like uh, like Spotify and others. Uh, so uh, when um, artificial intelligent assistant AI assistant knows the learners' data including what their uh, skills are, uh, the learning paths uh, that they are following and deliver, uh, 
then uh, they uh, can deliver um, suggestions, accurate su suggestions to what the learner, the students should um, engage uh, with next. Uh, okay. Mm. Considering a, a, a personalization in the learning process uh, and use of, of uh, modern technology environment, uh, then uh, one of the key elements uh, uh, which might be used uh, for different purposes uh, are hybrid classes. Hybrid classes means uh, a couple of different issues. Uh, it's it's not one uh, strategy. It's not the one type of, of uh, uh, activity, but uh, but a couple of them. Um, here, I would like to pr present, um, describe seven the main seven types of uh, hybrid classes. So the first one <clears throat> is pretty uh, typical. It's called blended synchronous. Uh, and it's about uh, synchronous education, which means that some of the students are attending in person um, class and some are attending uh, online, uh, but all at the same time. It uh, uh, allows students to join uh, uh, remotely, uh, sa saving the, 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 the time for travel. Uh, it's uh, especially important when the distance between students and teachers and, and the school and the, and the, uh, uh, and the place when the course uh, happens is pretty, uh, pretty uh, large. Another type, second type is blended asynchronous. Uh, it uh, allows learners or students to attend class after it has already uh, taken place in person. So it's it's really revolutionary for uh, interregional learning uh, across different time zones, uh, which uh, uh, allows to uh, avoid uh, uh, cases when uh, uh, some students uh, must attend uh, classes in the in the uh, middle of night at their uh, time zone. Next type is called blended asynchronous. Uh, uh, it uh, happened when part of the course uh, is live, the rest of the course is uh, recorded. Uh, and uh, this kind of hybrid classes is uh, are useful or is useful when when part time uh, learning uh, happened, especially for working professionals. It might be uh, very useful. So uh, next type is synchronous distributed, uh, and it's about uh, uh, that's when a group of students attend from different classrooms, while the teacher is uh, uh, only present in one. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, this type of of uh, hybrid teaching is useful when the teacher students ratio is very high, when the social distancing uh, needs or, or, or during guest lectures. Next one, the first one, blended synchronous plus, plus asynchronous. So some students attend live and in person, some attend live and remotely, others watch the recording. Uh, it gives a, a, a very high level of flexibility, flexibility uh, a, a self-paced learning and, and uh, a heterogeneous learning can together to achieve learning outcomes very flexible uh, approach in this case. So uh, another one, sixth uh, uh, type of hybrid classes is remote teacher in person learners. All learners are together in person, but the instructor joins uh, online via, via video uh, conferencing. And uh, um, maybe it's not very much flexible in terms of learning uh, process, but it's very much useful when you love to learn from famous professors around the world. It's, it's, it's very useful when, when you would like to uh, uh, meet uh, 
Nobel Prize winners, for example. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, in many cases, it's not possible in other uh, other form, uh, another form than, than remote teacher, remote um, meeting. And finally, the last uh, of uh, five hybrid classes, flipped class classroom. So content, course content is first shared uh, remotely and in-person meetings are focused mainly on active learning. So it allows, allows students to self-learn at, uh, at their preference preferred pace and uh, enable teachers to focus more on the comprehension and retention uh, explanation of uh, what uh, of some details but not uh, uh, but not uh, uh, not focus on on just just initial explanation of uh, main uh, material so as we can see uh, there are uh, different uh, options uh, in in uh, hybrid learning uh, and uh, from the wider perspective e-learning uh, it creates a, a, a different opportunities for students to personalize uh, learning they and they 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 learning uh, learning paths and to adjust uh, uh, the, the the strategy of learning uh, to their uh, needs and goals but uh, it can be highlighted that uh, creating personal learning paths in, in um, e-learning uh, um, should uh, fulfill some um, some requirements and uh, some of them so some tips uh, in order to to do this uh, are on the slide so firstly uh, it should be or uh, overall learning goals should be considered uh, the, the, the next is uh, empowerment. Empowerment is a key uh, to achieve a success in, uh, in learning uh, uh, by students. Uh, 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 it should be stressed uh, the in importance of online self-assessments as a, some sort of uh, element of uh, learning path. Um, some periodic milestones uh, so should be created. Uh, uh, use uh, uh, multiple different learning styles uh, uh, should be considered, and, and uh, 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 different learning styles uh, should be allowed. Uh, uh, some uh, constructive feedback um, should be offered, uh, possibly immediate. Or, or fast. Uh, so, uh, and of course, learning pathways offer a really invaluable uh, data. So, that's a couple of elements uh, uh, related to personalizing, uh, personalized learning paths in um, e learning. But uh, next, we, uh, I would like to uh, provide you with some tips in. Uh, designing inclusive courses. Uh, of course, personalized learning, we know it's a uh, quite complex course, they call complex issue, and it's uh, difficult to, to have a shortcut here. But few elements, few techniques can be highlighted. And uh, uh, on the next slides, uh, I would like to point out some of uh, them. So, uh, as the first of them, uh, uh, flip instruction. Uh, if uh, some, some students can learn at uh, their own pace, uh, flipped instruction is uh, the idea behind the me method uh, uh, involves inverting the normal learning process. Instead of having lectures at school and activities at home, the students watch recorded uh, lectures at home and engage in activities together during class time. This uh, really allows students to watch video lectures at uh, their own pace and uh, uh, to learn uh, uh, basic data, initial data at their uh, own pace and enables uh, to use uh, of students' activity and creativity during face-to-face -face activities. 
Uh, so that's the, the, the first one. The uh, second uh, uh, tip is to give a students multiple opportunities to show their knowledge. Uh, for example, uh, the use of online assess uh, assessment uh, uh, of knowledge, uh, example, uh, for example, via, via Google Forms. Uh, and of course, it has to be highlighted that it not, not replace um, other forms of knowledge uh, assessment. It should complement uh, other forms of, of, of knowledge assessment. So, so, so uh, constant assessments of students when they move through uh, course materials give a, a teacher uh, 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 insight into the knowledge level of his students and and um, allows to the learning process to be adapted when uh, uh, problems occur, when uh, occurs, when uh, uh, need to to be more specific or to be to to, to repeat a, a, a topic uh, in greater detail uh, is indicated. So it's not assessment for uh, it is the, so it's uh, this type of self assessment is uh, rather for uh, as a, uh, treated as an information for teacher than 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 as really assessing uh, uh, the, 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 than the final final assessment of, of uh, knowledge. Uh, Another issue is to allow, allow students to have an important part uh, in the, their learning experience. Um, so, for example, taking a part in, in goal setting within the classroom. So, when uh, uh, we consider the, the, this element, so personalizing content delivery and interaction helps students to improve by giving them, they, them, them control over their own learning environment. Uh, it might be also related to the use of artifacts that symbolize the achievement of particular goals. Uh, it um, may encourage uh, the development of self-awareness and planning competence. So it's uh, uh, widening the learning uh, experience uh, also about uh, about the additional element, not only the content of the of the course. And uh, also um, another element, which is also a bit similar to the previous one, uh, a bit similar, uh, I would explain it later, uh, is uh, uh, form lessons from the students' uh, own experience. So. Uh, Students of uh, any background bring a wealth of experiences to the table, to the classroom. Whenever the experience is, uh, experience is relevant to the topic and hand, it is uh, worthwhile to make a, it a part of a classroom discussion. Uh, it increases uh, the uh, motivation and topic understanding, of course. Uh, but also sharing and discussing personal life experience help to strengthen students' social skills. So that, and again, it widened the, uh, the, the learning experience uh, in the area of social skills, not only uh, focus on the uh, content itself. Uh, and finally, um, final uh, comment uh, to that is, uh, to let uh, let students teach, uh, it's uh, uh, quite difficult, of course, but it's the very effective learn to uh, way to learn something. Uh, uh, it's just simply to teach it. Uh, uh, when a student teaches the class, uh, learning uh, might happen in three times, in three dimension uh, dimensions. When the students uh, student first learn the material when the students teaches the material and when other students in class learn from the students. So uh, it, it really gives um, uh, students a an, an, an huge opportunity to explore their leadership, oratory skills, social skills, communication skills. So it might create uh, uh, opportunity to learn at, at, at a different, uh, many different dimensions. Uh, so that was the last element of uh, this uh, part of 
of the module. Thank you for uh, for your attention. Uh, goodbye.